According to Tasha Kenny of ARK Invest, to ignore robo-taxis is a huge mistake when it comes to Tesla stock. <laughs> what a shockingly accurate statement. I'm going to start with you because you're this is a we've been teasing it like this and I think this is correct. It's a bull bear debate here. I'm going to start with a bear given the given the print we just got uh, and some of these key misses, including, as I just mentioned, gap gross margin X credits coming in at 14.6 percent. You had said to us a couple weeks ago when the robo taxi announcement was pushed to October that the quality of Q2 earnings was going to matter more. Your thoughts today? Yeah, I mean, I think the key takeaway, looking at the numbers, you mentioned the gross margins, X credits missed. But I think the key takeaway is the second derivative of the business actually isn't improving here. I think there was some debate coming out of 2Q deliveries if the quality of deliveries was was good. And the reality is we... Bro, I just, I couldn't, I have to interrupt already. <laughs> oh, God damn it, dude. We're in late July 2024, witnessing what CNBS is describing as a Tesla bull versus Tesla bear debate. And some of the opening commentary from the Tesla bear relates to gross automotive margins, automotive business, automotive sales. Talk about missing the forest for the trees. You see with the gross margins, X credits line this quarter missing by quite a bit. The Tesla effectively bought a lot of business this quarter. And um, I don't really see how that changes going forward. We've already seen quite a few new promotions launched to start the third quarter. Mm. Tasha, I want to get your thoughts on these results, especially since I know Ark is a long-term investor in Tesla, and you've come on the show before and laid out the case for autonomous driving and robo-taxis, but even if that is the future, it's arguably years away, so why buy the stock now? <laughs> oh my God, dude. This question really gets to the crux of long-term investing versus short-term gambling, also known as trading. So we're now taking a peek at Apple, the stock, over time. Just want to take a quick poll of the audience. Roughly where from IPO until the present day, where would have been the ideal time to buy and hold Apple stock? Any takers? Would it have been around 12 cents per share, 31 cents per share, 49 cents per share, $6.80 per share, $29 per share, $130 per share, $217 per share? Where would have been the ideal time to buy and hold Apple stock? Would it have been before the huge surge in growth, earnings, and value that may in fact have been years away? If you had bought Apple stock back in 2000 at 92 cents per share, if phenomenal future earnings was years away, wouldn't it have made more sense to wait until it was $42 per share and then buy it? Around the time of the release of the iPhone, evident that Apple is building a huge, huge army of users with devices, potential future recurring revenue, never mind the upgrades, the services. If you saw into the future and said, holy shit, man, they're selling millions of these things. That means there's going to be tens of millions and hundreds of millions times X per month for users. That's a fuckload of money. Could be a few years away. Would the ideal time to buy Apple stock following the release of the iPhone and the inevitable explosion in earnings have been, let's see here, soon after the iPhone took the world by storm, $3.33 per share, or would you sit on the sidelines and go, oh, well, you know, that crazy earnings is years away, so I'll just wait. Maybe you should have waited until it was $23 a share. Missed that 600% gain. Of course, Apple and Apple stock here is the only ever time that something like this has occurred where there's been phenomenal growth over the long term due to a transformation in a business from predominantly hardware to a more software-like business model with much higher margins. But again, I do ask the question, why would you want to buy a stock before the company starts printing truly staggering, unfathomable amounts of money a few years later, why would you want to buy it before that happens, years before that happens? Uh-oh. I think, uh-oh. I think, folks, we may have a second example here. We're looking at Microsoft stock. By the way, what a fucked up name for a company, Microsoft. Even as like a 12-year-old, I was making jokes about that. 10 cents per share. Today, $425 per share. Now, there are people today who are currently buying Microsoft stock. And hey, whatever, I'm not judging you, but you know what? You know what would have been a lot better than buying Microsoft stock today? Buying it a decade ago at one-tenth its current price. But don't worry, Apple and Microsoft are the only ever examples of stocks, companies that have accrued phenomenal value over time. Oh, wait, what's this? What are we looking at here? Oh, no, uh, that would be Amazon stock. We doing this again? Yeah, we sure fucking are, folks. So I just want to conduct another poll. Would you personally have preferred to, I don't know, have purchased Amazon stock yesterday at $182.50 per share or perhaps about a decade and a half ago at $2.59, about 7,000 
percent to go? Yeah, it's a tough one. I don't know the answer to that question either, actually. Jeez. But don't worry. There's only three ever exempt. Wait. Oh, maybe there's four. What's this? NVIDIA. Oh, we're doing this again? We are. Yeah, I know. I know I've made my point, but I'm still not done. NVIDIA stock at IPO. Split adjusted, of course. Four cents per share. <laughs> Today, $113.06 per share. Again, I asked the question, would you have preferred to be buying NVIDIA at around $6 per share or $113 a share? Or perhaps Alphabet stock, e.g. Google's parent company. I could do this all day, folks. Unless you have a time machine and or a crystal ball, or your brain truly is big enough to predict things ahead of time and exactly know the perfect time to purchase and sell and purchase and sell and purchase and sell. If you believe a company is set to print ludicrous money over the long term, to answer the question, why would you buy today if that potential ludicrous revenue and profitability is a few years away, the answer to the question, why would you buy today, is so you're on the right side of that growth. To benefit from it, as opposed to chase after it. I mean, call me crazy, but in every single one of these examples, I personally would have preferred to have bought the stock as early as possible and held it as long as possible. So I purchased it for the lowest possible price and benefited the most from the astronomical growth. But hey, that's just me, some guy who understands how numbers work. Number go up, good. The bigger the up, the bigger the good. Not difficult. So I'm just going to listen to that question one more time. I'm not hating on Morgan here. I'm sure that she's just asking the questions that her director wants her to ask. But goddamn, dude, this interaction so hilarious. We've got Mr. Gross Automotive Margin next quarter. We've got Miss Five Plus Years into the Future. Autonomy is a big deal. And we've got, hey, just ask the questions that are being fed into your ear, Morgan. Yeah, so actually, I, I think, you know, when we're talking about robo taxis, um, this is something that will happen, we believe, within the next five years. Um, so, in fact, our you know five year price target, we think that robo taxis will contribute over to over 90 percent of the enterprise value of, of Tesla at that point. Um, so I think, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing more detail on the call. Um, what we've been seeing from Tesla is, of course, incremental software updates. Um, you know, they have a, a latest version of FSD where uh, it's it's very limited and it's released currently. But, you know, um, they're they're adding the functionality to to take your hands off the wheel. They said in the letter that they expect the um, take rate of the full self-driving software to increase based on the increased functionality that they see. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing more about that rollout because I think to ignore robo taxis today is a huge mistake with this stock because ultimately it's an AI play. She's right. I mean, she's so right. It's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, Ron, I don't understand. Did, <laughs> His one word response to Tasha saying to ignore robo taxis is a huge mistake. It's okay. Ah, we got to listen to that again. Holy fuck, dude. He had nothing to say. I have to hear that again, that whole interaction. It's just, is this real? Did that, did that happen? Did I somehow miss his response? Or did he really just say nothing and then okay? To ignore robo-taxis today is a huge mistake with his stock because ultimately it's an AI play. Okay. Uh, Ron, I don't understand the robo-taxi business model case. I mean, the entire market cap of Uber right now all right, stop right there, bro. If your first point of reasoning on the potential robotaxi opportunity is, well, let me compare this to something that has completely different economics, e.g. human-driven ride hail, Uber, where you have to pay a human the biggest cost, which robotaxis doesn't have, you've already lost. At scale, robotaxis will be significantly more affordable. Never mind, better, more convenient, no driver, no, let's be honest here, often smelly driver, rude driver, annoying driver, won't shut the fuck up driver talking to his relatives, driver, whatever it is. A robotaxi is not an Uber in terms of both the experience and convenience, but most importantly of all, the cost. So a huge, a fatal mistake to make when reasoning is to go, well, Uber's only this size opportunity, therefore surely a Tesla robotaxi or all robotaxis could never possibly exceed the size of Uber. Therefore, please explain. It's about $141 billion. And if if Tesla's robo-taxis wipe out the need for Uber and they take all of that, it's still not that much. Plus, if they're that good, doesn't that mean I don't need to buy a Tesla? And won't it be really hard to make the numbers work if people buy fewer Teslas because they can just get uh, a robot-driven Uber? Yeah, I think the argument that robo-taxi bulls would make, and again, we're, we're certainly not one, but the argument they would make is that the pie grows massively. I think... Correct and credit where it's due. 
despite being a bear, he at least acknowledges the argument bulls would make. The argument we would make, and we're seeing this in China already, is pricing comes down massively and most of that excess profit and excess margin gets competed away. Um, I mean, right now in China, Apollo, which is, is owned by Baidu, to be clear, is is offering rides for just over 10 cents a mile. I think most robo-taxi bulls would view that as a very blue sky pricing scenario for uh for robo taxi models. So I think what we struggle with with robo taxis isn't isn't that Tesla can't get there at any point in time. It's it is the timeline, but it's also what steady state unit economics look like because even if Tesla has a ten thousand dollar cost advantage in robo taxis, that's a massive cost advantage. Over a million miles useful life for a vehicle, that's a penny a mile. It, it's not that meaningful. Hmm. So Tasha, do people want to be driven around in really nice Tesla robo taxis that are so high quality that they're going to pay that much for the ride? Why would robo taxi be worth more than selling a whole lot of Teslas? Well, you know, you, you compare Tesla to Uber, I'd say that Uber has proven that the ride hailing market should exist and there is demand for it. Um, but robo taxis will greatly expand the current ride hail opportunity. I, I mean, I think it could be a, a you know, 10x or, or more ex How? expansion. Right. That's and because unless, unless people I stop buying economists... cars altogether. I mean, there aren't that many more people or that many more places to go, are there? So it's not about selling individual cars. It's about the utilization of the vehicle. It's about the miles traveled on the car and you're paying per mile here, right? So today, you know, we were just talking about China. Yes, ride hail is priced significantly lower than the U.S. in China. Um, but in the U.S., you know, Uber is charging $2 or more per mile. Tesla can undercut that price because it already has a lower operating cost thanks to its electric vehicle platform. Uh, add autonomy on top of that. That really leverages that cost structure. And once you're able to lower price, you bring more people into the market. You start having, by the way, which is already happening in certain cities, young people will forego buying vehicles because they'll say, hey, I'm going to take an autonomous ride hailing network because it's actually not that expensive. And in fact, it's cheaper than me driving my personal car if I account for the all-in costs. So I think that's what's really exciting here. And again, I do think that the US is where we'll first see this rolling out. I do think China will be a much more competitive market. You know, in fact, in our valuation for Tesla, we have reduced economics for that reason, because we also believe that there's a chance they might have to share with other local players mm. in terms of the take that they get. Okay. Um, but makes no mistake, I mean, this is a, a market that you should not ignore here. So after a few moments of reflection, I've decided to actually disagree very strongly with Tasha. In fact, I highly encourage everyone watching to not only ignore robo taxis, but to make sure that their friends, family, colleagues, neighbours, even their enemies also ignore robo taxis. Because if enough people ignore the opportunity, my money will be stretching a lot further every time I buy Tesla stock, which is every time I can afford to. So it's obviously in my selfish best interest to be paying as little as possible for Tesla each time I buy when I have cash. Therefore, you should definitely absolutely ignore autonomy and the implications. In fact, the only thing you should be focused on right now is Tesla's gross automotive margins, automotive revenues, and also Elon Musk having opinions. Thank you very much and goodbye. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. Plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. 
It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month's supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens. Now, AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer i just i cannot believe how effective this is no longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons it's fucking amazing there's only one thing to recommend seriously try athletic greens you won't go back so obviously just like elon musk is a liar a fraud a con man a scammer a fake engineer and tesla's going bankrupt you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who without any financial incentive was promoting this product to his audience on patreon when they're asking about health and what he's doing for supplements because obviously there was some other reason he recommended that obviously I'm not sure what it was but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. Unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.